Hello lovely people, Dyram here with a build guide for last epoch patch 0.9. This is my fire golemancer build using a special unique item to summon a bunch of golems. That item, Aaron's will, is required and as such this isn't a starter or beginner build. You should respec an existing necromancer build as soon as you find this item. As such, I won't talk much about leveling either. It is a great build however, I'm level 96 and doing 250 corruption at the moment, which works pretty well. I built this as a typical necromancer summoner, so it is lazy, although I will throughout the guide give some alternative routes as well that you could take. This guide should have everything you need, it has timestamps and useful links in the description and without further ado, let's dive in. Let's look at the pros and cons. Here are the pros. It is a well-rounded character, able to do maps and bosses alike. It's a lazy summoner playstyle with your minions doing the work. The damage output of multiple golems is pretty overpowered. And multiple golems on screen looks and feels very satisfying, especially with all the changes done in 0.9. Then the cons. It is a lazy summoner playstyle with your minions doing the work and that is just not for everyone. I have very good gear but still at around 250 corruption you start to notice you are becoming quite squishy. Let's start with the build requirements. There's really only one requirement and that is that you need Aaron's will, Unique's chest, created by Aaron from the YouTube channel Action RPG. I would say that Etera's path on most summoners is just too good to pass up on. I also use Raven's Rise and Logi's Hunger, both excellent items and this character has a ton of good gear like I said because I wanted to push this character a bit further than I normally do. Then the build philosophy. My build philosophy in general is just that I want to play fun builds and in this case just wanting to make Aaron's will work, which isn't too difficult. The item is pretty powerful. I'll use this section to explain some fundamental build choices that I made and I will also recognize a few other routes you could take with this item. Let's first talk about how Aaron's will works. It allows you to summon one golem for every four skeletons you can summon. These are regular skeletons by the way. Skeletal mages don't count. If you are a necromancer and you use all the points available to you to increase the number of skeletons you can summon, you end up at nine skeletons. That is two additional golems. You can, in theory, get up to 12 skeletons, but I think it's extremely difficult because you need a double hollow finger unique ring, that's okay, but you also need the affix on a chest that provides plus one skeleton. Only then are you at 12 skeletons, unless I'm completely missing an item here that provides another skeleton as well. As Aaron's will is your chest, you would need to find an Aaron's will with at least one legendary potential and then make a legendary Aaron's will with plus one skeleton as an affix, which is close to impossible of course, because the base item is already extremely rare and high level, so you're not going to find many to begin with and definitely not a lot with legendary potential on it. So I opted to use in total three golems for this build. The summon golem tree has options to get more golems as well, but I will cover those once we get to the skills and I'll also tell you why I didn't go that route. Then I would say you have roughly three different versions of this build in terms of archetypes. You can spec into a build that lets these golems just behave like any other minion and they rampage around doing massive damage. I took that approach. Within that archetype you have the option to choose any type of golem you want and I went with fire golems dealing large AoE fire explosions and dot damage. Great for clear, decent for bosses. I'm sure if you spec into cold damage instead it would work too with an item like frozen eyes of Formosus freezing enemies. The second archetype is a much more active playstyle where you hit your golems with spells and as a result they retaliate with bone shatter. The main issue here is twofold in my opinion. Aaron's will puts a 3 second cooldown on bone shatter so you would need a ton of minion cooldown recovery for this build to feel good. Second of all, you need to target your golems to a specific location constantly and keep spamming blood rip and while there's a guide for that on Maxwell that you can follow, I found that playstyle to be very clunky. It does superior damage for sure and works great on bosses because there targeting isn't a thing. But while mapping, I personally found it tedious to play. The third archetype is to turn these golems into a ward generator because Aaron's will provides ward generation from the golems when they are on low health. As golems can get massive health pools, you could have massive ward from just this chest alone. 
you would get more golems in the summon golem tree and use something else perhaps as your main damage skill. So what do you need in terms of stats? Here is the wish list. In terms of defenses, make sure to get rest cap, of course, and ideally get 100% crit avoidance. The blessings in the monolith can help a lot here too, as well as idols. Intelligence works well, scaling minions and providing ward retention. We do get some ward, but health is the main life resource. Mana and mana region are nice, and some minion flat health and health region does help. Remember that minions skill with your level too, so they do get stronger over time. In terms of offense, we're scaling minion modifiers and skill levels of minions. I'm also quite heavily leaning into minion crit chance and while it is not 100%, you can definitely tell they crit often and hard. Let's look at the skill specialization and the skills that we're using. I will not discuss each point invested but instead focus on the most important nodes. You can see everything in the build planner yourself including the order in which I leveled up the skills. Our main skill is Bone Golem. I have a whopping 28 points in this one. I already explained most of this in the build philosophy. I'm specifically not taking twin golems because I feel the loss in damage doesn't make up for the additional golem. Also, they're much smaller and less cool this way. Instead, I made fire golems so the skill receives the points from Logi's hunger. You can take anything but bone kindling unless you want your golems to eat your skeletal mages. I did try that out but found that the mages by themselves are actually useful at range so I wanted to keep them alive. The movement speed from amalgam of rogues and a natural speed is mandatory for mapping because it's basically translating directly to DPS. It's also massive quality of life. I rounded out with amalgam of mages for 75% more spell damage scaling the fire AoE hits even more. Up next summon skeleton. It really doesn't matter how you spec this, the only thing that matters is that you get all of the plus one skeleton nodes, because you can't summon them anyway. There are three such nodes, this allows this skill alone to summon six skeletons, so that is one additional golem. The other two skeletons come from the mastery towards necromancer and the passive tree, and that's just one point. That puts you at eight skeletons, which is two additional golems. Up next, summon skeletal mage. We can get five of these, two by default, one here from the passive tree, one from the mastery towards necro and the final fifth one from the passive tree. For the skill tree, go south to seller mortis for crit and then grey merchant for crit multi and then pyromancers plus inferno, making sure you only summon fire mages. We buff their speed and cast speed a bit by making our way ultimately to grave passage, which is a new skill node that teleports you to the location you summon the mage. This makes summon mage my movement ability. Finally, if you have the points, dump them in flat spell damage, so grave tide. Then summon volatile zombie, which I am auto casting. This is another fire minion and you could swap this with flame wraiths, I guess, but I like the zombies. Forceful commander deals with the cast time and mana cost. Two out of two ravenous is great against tougher enemies, 60% more damage. Pool of the Grave next to that is Calling Strike or Kill Threshold of no less than 16%. Very useful on bosses. Summon more zombies at once with Dreadful Horde. I found 3 to be the sweet spot. And then I'm also opting to spawn Parasites on Zombie Death using Vile Force. These really don't do much, however they count as minions, they attack pretty quickly and they shred armor which is a mechanic we will use to scale further for more damage. Final points go into Path of Destruction, which is just a quality of life, and Necromantic Fervor for a bit of healing. Then our final ability, Dread Shade. We use this to buff our army. It can be a bit finicky to apply as we have tons of temporary minions like the parasites I just mentioned, but okay. There is a great buff indicator in the lower end of the screen indicating that the buff is up or not to help you out. Normally Dreadshade drains minion health, but we're changing that. So path towards Lone Watcher, it makes minions take more damage but doesn't drain their health. You are now limited to just one Dreadshade, but it lasts a long time. 4 out of 4 spectral presence is mandatory for the AoE. Dying Coven increases attack and cast speed a lot. Grim Fate is another more multiplier to minion damage, very strong. 
I round it out with Lingering Doom, some flat damage, 1 point in Wisdom of the Dead, preserving mana, and 3 out of 3 Flash Harvest, mainly useful if minions are losing health. This tends to happen at bosses, increasing their damage with this node. Time to look at the passives, I have recorded the link below the progression of the passives so you can see that for yourself in the planner. I will just pick out a few nodes that I want to highlight. In the Acolyte tree, I am ultimately specking into Mania of Mortality, because we have so many temporary low health minions that are dying, plus enemies die around us all the time as well. This is a decent source of ward, and while we're not scaling much ward retention, it is another 700 to 800 layer of ward on our 1.6k health pool. In the Necromancer tree, for the same reasons, we take Reclamation of Souls 5 out of 5. Another mandatory note here is Aegis Fall, providing 200% chance to strat armor on minion hit. As we have tons of minions, we are regularly at 200 plus armor shred stacks on bosses, which is a decent more multiplier to damage, as it increases the damage damage bosses take. To add to that and to add a bit of flavor to the build, I've added 3 out of 3 Dark Retribution, providing another 3 permanent minions applying stacks. Effigies is a lifesaver, take that one for sure. Tyrant's Legion, just the one point, is where our 8th skeleton comes from. We take as much as we can from the minion crit route at the top of the tree and don't forget to take the skeletal mage note here as well. Then, also very important, gear. We went through the main gear piece, Aaron's Will. This is a random drop, apparently quite rare, so yeah, good luck farming. Since we're fire minions, Logi's Hunger dropped from the triple fire shaman at the Spears of Fire timeline. That provides plus two to fire minion skills, that's pretty huge. The flat minion crit chance is also amazing. Raven's Rise, the gloves are another rare random drop, provide minion movement speed, more minion levels and some resistances. Etera's Path is a common random drop but still in my opinion hard to beat when it comes to summoner builds because minion movement speed is just so important. Minions can't do damage before they reach their targets after all. And golems are melee minions. The rest of my gear is very good in fact. For a weapon I chose to go with minion spell damage as the AoE fire ability from the golem is a spell and mages they use spells too, plus the zombies their explosion is a spell as well. You could also equip an Arax bones for more armor shred, that could work I guess. Try to get more levels to summon bone golems on the helmet and a flesh bound tome with minion stats seems like a solid choice. For idols I have a mix here of possible candidates. Minion cooldown reduction is great because it procs that fire AoE more often. Minion chance to mark for death is mandatory, it is a massive damage boost and I then took a mix of increased damage and some more resistances. For blessings I'm taking mostly resistance blessings because I don't want to deal with resistances. I did also pick up the minion damage blessing from the spirits of fire timeline. I normally create extensive loot filters but this time I did not. You should already have a necromancer with fire minions or something and then swap. I have a build played in the multiplayer beta with a guide and all for fire minions that has a decent loot filter so I will link that. I will post my current loot filter of this build but there's hardly anything on there. It is super strict and you should have most of the gear already after all. It shows some idols, some plus level affixes. It shows that super rare plus one skeleton affix on the chest and then just unique sets and exalted items. Only exalted items for me would be an upgrade anyway. Here's the build in action. It's honestly just a bunch of buffed up minions stomping the content. I really enjoy the whole feel of commanding this powerful army and while a regular fire minion armor shredding army was already quite powerful, these additional fire golems take it to the next level for sure. It is a joy to play, you don't have to do much at all and the only thing you should worry about is occasionally applying the dread shade but much more than that, especially at 250 plus corruption, try to not get hit. I normally have a leveling section but not today as you should swap from an existing summoner towards this. Let's talk some monolith modifiers. There aren't any modifiers that are detrimental although chill and slow can be detrimental to your sanity while playing this build. I would primarily pick modifiers that buff the defenses of the enemies instead of their damage. Our army is more than strong enough, that's not the problem here. We are however a little bit squishy, so hence this advice. I spent a good chunk of time on these guides, which is why I don't release too many of them. If you appreciate the effort, consider liking or subscribing, it really helps me out. Thanks for watching, see you soon, love you all, bye bye.